Right, today I'm looking at a method that is all to do with ratios, but it's a technique you can use in lots of situations that you might not even have thought were to do with ratios. You might find it particularly useful if you're preparing for a GCSE exam. Here are three questions that we'll be able to use this method with, and you can see on the face of it, they look quite different. There's uh, currency conversions, there's one to do with speed and time, and finally one to do with reverse percentages. These are questions that people often get wrong without realizing they're getting them wrong. So this might be you, maybe you're doing them wrong without realizing it. So before we go on, pause the video and try and work them out yourself, in particular that percentages one, as it's really easy to get tripped up on that one. I'll be back with the answers after the intro and I'll show you one method that will help you easily answer all of those questions. Okay, how did you get on? If you got them all correct, I think you might actually still be interested in seeing this method. If you couldn't do them, or if you made a mistake, then carry on watching and I'll show you how to do it correctly. I want to start with a currency conversion because I've found people often find it difficult to know whether to multiply or divide or you know just what do you do with you know with those types of questions. So setting them out in ratios in the way I'm going to show you really helps make sense of this so you can see what you should do. Having said that, I have deliberately started with a reasonably straightforward example just to show you how the method works and then I'll be doing more complicated examples after this. All right, so the first one. Jordan goes on holiday to Florida. The exchange rate is one pound is equal to $1.70 and he changes 900 pounds into dollars. How many dollars will he get? We know that one pound is equal to $1.70 and we want to know how many dollars 900 pounds would be. The, using this method, we write it out as a ratio like this, one pound to $1.70. And for the rest of the question, it's really important that we keep the dollars on this side and the pounds on this side. And you can see the number we have on the dollar side is bigger than the number we have on the pound side. Uh, that should be the case when we get our answer as well. To get to 900 pounds, we just have to multiply by 900. We've got one pound, but we want to get to 900. So, you know, multiply by 900. But to keep our ratio in the same proportion, we must multiply that right hand side by 900 too. The dollar side must mirror exactly what we did on the pound side. So $1.70 times 900 is 1,530. So 900 pounds equals $1,530. And just as a little check, our dollar side is still greater than our pound side, just, just as it should be. Dead easy, right? I'm gonna show you how you can use this for harder questions too. Incidentally, as with all areas of math, this is something that just gets better and better and easier and easier with a bit of practice. So I'll leave a link up here and in the description below to my website where I've put up lots of different types of exam style questions that can all be solved using this one method. It's all interactive, so all you've got to do is type in your answer and you can see straight away whether you've got it correct or not. Right. There's actually a, a second part to this question, um, so you might want to pause the video, have a go yourself uh, before I go through it. We have the same exchange rate of £1 to $1.70, but this time we're going the other way. We're changing dollars to pounds, okay? Uh, so it's no problem. We'll start off in the same way by writing the ratio of dollars to pounds, 1 to 170. So we have to multiply $1.70 by something to get up to 160. And all we then have to do is mirror that on the other side and multiply the pounds by the same amount. Only this time it's not obvious what we need to multiply by, is it? Off the top of my head, I don't know what 1.7 multiplies by to make 160. But don't worry, this method takes care of that for us. We just have to do it in two steps. So first of all, we're gonna simplify it down to $1 and we do that by dividing by $1.70 or, or 1.7, and we're gonna mirror that on the left-hand side as well. So with these ratios, if you multiply or divide both sides by the same amount, everything works nicely, okay? But you can't add or subtract. Now we have a ratio that shows us that $1 is equal to just under 59 pence. Then it's really straightforward from here. We just need to multiply by 160 to get those dollars up 
to $160. We're talking about money, so it makes sense to round off our answer, and you can see that $160 is equal to £94.12. Okay, this next example looks at speed and distance. So Frankie drove a distance of 342 kilometers and she took three hours, 15 minutes. How many minutes would it take her to go 114 kilometers? So the question asks how many minutes it would take to travel 114 kilometers, but the information we've been given is in hours. So the first thing I would do is change that three hours, 15 minutes into minutes. There are 60 minutes in an hour, so three hours will be three times 60, which is 180. And then it add on a 15 and we have 195 minutes. So she travels 342 kilometers in 195 minutes. I'll put the, the time on the left hand side and the distance on the right hand side. Now we have the ratio 195 to 342. You'll notice that the distance is just under two times as big as the time. It, and it's worth noting that because when we get our answer at the end, it should still be in the same proportion. In other words, the number of kilometers should still be just under twice as many as the number of minutes. We want to know how long it will take to travel 114 kilometers. And it's not easy to see how we do that in one step. So we'll do just as we did last time and we'll divide down to one kilometer and then we'll multiply back up to 114. To do that, we'll divide both sides by 342. And the right hand side will now just go down to one. And on the left hand side, we have to divide 195 by 342. For the moment, I'm not actually going to work out that as a decimal. I'm just going to write it as a fraction like this, um, 195 over 342, because it's just, it's just a nice, efficient way of showing that division without having to write out a long answer with lots of decimals or, or, or without having to round off anyway at this stage. And we'll just do the full calculation at the end. Now we have one kilometer. It's a simple step to go up to 114. We just have to multiply by 114. Of course, remembering to mirror that on the left hand side as well. So we have 195 over 342 times 114, which gives us 65. So it takes 65 minutes to travel 114 kilometers. And you'll notice that the number of kilometers is still just under twice as many as the number of minutes, which is good. That's what we were after. Okay, the final example then looks at reverse percentages. Sam buys a TV. 20% VAT is added to the price of the TV. And Sam now has to pay 360 pounds. What was the price of the TV before VAT was added? Now, people often think you can just find 20% of 360 and subtract that, but no, that will actually give you an incorrect answer. Here's how to do it correctly. With these ones, we need to think of the original amount, that is the price without the VAT, as 100%, right? Your starting amount is 100%. We then added VAT at 20%. So we had 100% and now we've added 20%. We now have 120%. That means that the price of £360 is equal to 120%. From here, we're just back to using the exact same method, setting those two numbers up in a ratio. I put the amount of money on the left hand side and the percentage on the right. And what we're trying to do here is get back to the original amount, back to the 100% in other words. So I think we could actually do this one without a calculator. If we divide that right hand side by 12, it will take us down to 10%. And of course, we must divide the amount of money by 12 as well. And in this example, that's reasonably straightforward. 360 divided by 12 is 30. Now it's easy to multiply that right hand side up to 100. You just have to multiply by 10 and we must multiply the left hand side by 10 as well, of course. And there we go. That The original price was £300. Now the reason I decided to divide by 12 was because I wanted to get a number that I knew I could easily multiply up to get 100. And it's easy to go from 10 to 100. You just multiply by 10. But depending on your, your starting number, you might find it easier to divide down to, say, 20%, because that's also easy to multiply up to 100, um, or 
five percent because that's also easy to multiply up to a hundred or you know in fact any number that you know how to easily multiply it up to a hundred we can easily check our answer to this question. 20% of 300 is 60, and if we add that on to 300, it gives you 360. So that's it, one method that can be used in multiple situations. As I mentioned earlier, I have examples of lots of these types of questions for you to practice on my website. It's completely free to use, uh, and hopefully will be really useful for you to practice you know, these questions and this technique that we looked at today. That is all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it and I very much look forward to seeing you next week.